The 1980s marked a significant turning point in the evolution of action movies, as the genre experienced a remarkable transformation in terms of storytelling, visual effects, and character development. The decade witnessed the rise of charismatic and larger-than-life action heroes, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. These actors brought a new level of physicality, wit, and charm to their roles, captivating audiences worldwide. Action movies of the 1980s often reflected the socio-political climate of the era, with the Cold War tensions and the rise of terrorism. Films like Rambo and Red Dawn tapped into the fears and anxieties of the time, portraying heroes fighting against oppressive regimes or defending their homeland. These movies provided a cathartic outlet for audiences, offering a sense of empowerment and escapism amidst real-world uncertainties. However, towards the end of the 1980s, Action films evolved beyond mere mindless entertainment, incorporating more intricate and engaging storylines. Films like Lethal Weapon introduced a new level of narrative depth, combining thrilling action with well-developed characters and intricate plot twists. This shift towards more sophisticated storytelling added an extra layer of substance to the genre, attracting a wider range of viewers. But it was the release of Die Hard in 1988 that would change the course and shape of action movies for decades to come. Directed by John McTiernan and starring Bruce Willis as NYPD detective John McClane, its thrilling plot, memorable characters, and intense action sequences made the film become a classic in the action genre. Hey everyone, I'm Brendan Kelleher. Die Hard is one of those films that seems to come up in discussions every Christmas time. You'd be very hard pressed to find someone who actually hates it, but in the last few years, the question of whether it actually counts as a Christmas movie is the subject of fierce debate both online and in real life. Warn that later. The story revolves around John McClane, a New York City police officer who finds himself trapped in a Los Angeles skyscraper during a Christmas party that is taken over by a group of terrorists. McClane comes the lone hero who must outsmart and outmaneuver the villains to save the hostages, including his estranged wife. The inception of Die Hard can be traced back to the early 1980s when producer Lawrence Gordon acquired the rights to Richard Thorpe's novel, Nothing Lasts Forever. The journey from novel to the big screen was not a straightforward one. Initially, the book was intended to be a sequel to the 1968 film The Detective, starring Frank Sinatra. However, Sinatra, who played the lead in the original film, declined the opportunity to reprise his role, and the project was put on hold. It wasn't until the mid-1980s that the project gained momentum, when screenwriter Jeb Stewart was brought on board to adapt the novel into a screenplay. Stewart's keen understanding of the source material and his ability to craft engaging dialogue laid the foundation for the film's success. The script for Nothing Lasts Forever was adapted into a standalone film, and the role of John McClane was offered to several actors, including Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and even Richard Gere. However, it was Bruce Willis, known primarily for his comedic role in the hit television series Moonlighting, who ultimately won the part. This decision proved to be a game-changer, as Willis brought a unique blend of vulnerability, wit, and action hero charisma to the character. This was the age of Schwarzenegger and Stallone, and although Willis clearly got in shape for the part, the idea of Willis as a serious action hero was hard to believe, given his role as David Addison on Moonlighting. Interestingly, Willis initially turned down the role due to his commitments to Moonlighting, but when his co-star Sybil Shepherd got pregnant, the show's production schedule was put on hold for three months, giving Willis time to film the movie. The film's director, John McTiernan, also played a crucial role in its development. McTiernan, known for his work on the action thriller Predator, brought a fresh perspective to the genre. He focused on creating a realistic and intense atmosphere, emphasizing McClane's vulnerability and the high stakes of the situation. McTiernan's innovative use of camera angles and his ability to build tension through pacing and editing elevated the film to new heights. McTiernan also wanted to give the film a lot of joy, as he saw that most films involving terrorism involved mean, nasty acts, in his own words. He conveyed this especially with the villains actually being a crew of highly specialised thieves, with an elaborate plan to steal billions of bearer bonds from the Nakatomi vault. He even managed to sneak in a public service message about the dangers of smoking. Oh, these are very bad for you. I think what sets apart the character of John McClane from other action heroes of the 80s was the fact that he wasn't some giant indestructible killing machine like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. Speaking of which, at one point, screenwriter Stephen D'Souza pitched a version of the Die Hard script 
as a possible sequel to Commando, but Schwarzenegger wasn't interested. Willis brought a great combination of wit, toughness and vulnerability to John McClane. As the voice of the trailer man says, he's an easy man to like, but a hard man to kill. McClane may actually also have slight mental problems. He spends a lot of the film talking to himself. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. I know what a TV dinner feels like. This may also be a case of the fact that Willis was a natural comedian, and his self commentary about the crazy situations he's in is part of the reason why we like him so much. Given how great Hans Gruber is as a villain, it's to Willis' credit that he doesn't have the film stolen from him by Alan Rickman. Willis has never been better than he was here. This was clearly a star-making role, and he made the most of it. Speaking of villains, Die Hard has one of the all-time great ones in action movie history. Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. Rickman was an experienced stage actor, but amazingly, Die Hard was actually his first film. Rickman's ability to embody the role of a sophisticated and intelligent villain is unparalleled. Gruber was not your typical antagonist in the 80s. He's cunning, manipulative, and possesses a unique charm that sets him apart. You're amazing. You figured this all out already. Also, Rickman's mastery of the English language played a significant role in his portrayal of Hans Gruber. His distinctive voice, with its rich tone and precise enunciation, lent an air of sophistication to the character. Whether it was a snide remark or a calculated threat, Rickman's impeccable timing and nuanced delivery added layers of complexity to Gruber's persona. Just the way he carried himself, with a calculated elegance and a hint of arrogance, further solidified Gruber as a great adversary to McLean. In the initial script, Gruber was dressed in fatigues. Rickman envisioned the character as being more of a businessman than anything else. Nice suit. John Phillips, London. I have two myself. Rickman's chemistry with Bruce Willis was electric. The dynamic between the two characters was a crucial element of the film's success, and Rickman's ability to play off Willis's energy was remarkable. Their intense on-screen interactions, filled with tension, created a captivating battle of wits that kept audiences on the edge of their seats. Make no mistake, Gruber is a murdering scumbag, but Rickman is just so captivating and even charming in this role that you almost want him to get away with his plan. Despite the film being centered around two great lead performances, the supporting cast of this film is terrific, and a large part of why Die Hard is such a rewatchable classic to this day. Even the smaller parts such as Hart Bachner's Ellis and Paul Gleason as Dwayne T. Robinson are standouts, and despite the seriousness of the overall situation, provide a lot of the film's comic relief. Robert Davy and Grandel Bush as the FBI agents Johnson and Johnson, no relation, managed to be funny while simultaneously playing everything dead serious. Interestingly, in the following year, both actors would play bitter adversaries in the James Bond adventure Licensed to Kill. While it's Reginald Vell Johnson as Sergeant Powell, who is, in my opinion, the co-lead to the film next to Bruce Willis. Despite never appearing on screen together until the very end, McLean and Powell spark up a terrific friendship every bit as good as Riggs and Murtaugh and Lethal Weapon. The scene where McLean is convinced he's going to die, breaks down and asks Powell to find his wife and tell her how much she means to him is one of my favourite scenes. For a movie that's famous for its huge and suspenseful action sequences, it's these kind of major character moments played by actors at the top of their game, which helped make it stand out in a decade of over-the-top action movies. For both Willis and Rickman, their first scene together in the Bill Clay sequence is another standout. Producer Joel Silver wanted a scene between the pair before the final confrontation, but the writers had difficulty coming up with a plausible scenario where that could take place. Screenwriter Stephen D'Souza happened to overhear Rickman imitating an American accent and came up with the Bill Clay sequence, where Gruber would hide his identity using an American accent. Speaking of the Bill Clay scene, a subject for debate amongst fans over the years, is at what point does McLean figure out that Bill is actually Hans. I've always thought that he just tested him by handing him an unloaded gun, but I've heard some say that during the scene where Hans is offered a cigarette by McLean, he holds a cigarette as, from what I've been told, as a European would. This was intended to be taken as a clue to his identity for John. I'm not a smoker, so I can't verify this. One of the most underappreciated elements of the film is Michael Kamen's musical score. Given the film's Christmas setting, 
Heyman subverts classical pieces of music, such as Beethoven's Ode to Joy, and others such as Singing in the Rain, A Winter of Wonderland as dark themes for Hans and his gang of terrorists. It's not until La La Land Records released the complete three-disc edition of the film's score for its 30th anniversary that I really appreciated how good the music score is in this film, and how it subverts what an action movie score could be. As for whether Die Hard is a Christmas movie, it's a question that sparks endless debates and heated discussions amongst movie fans this time of year. While some argue that Die Hard is indeed a Christmas movie, others vehemently disagree. The film undeniably takes place during the holiday season, with Christmas decorations adorning the building and festive music playing in the background. However, Christmas setting alone does not automatically classify it as a Christmas movie. One of the main arguments in favour of Die Hard being a Christmas movie is its underlying themes. At its core, Die Hard explores the importance of family, love and redemption, which are often associated with the Christmas spirit. John McClane's relentless determination to save his wife and reconcile their strained relationship mirrors the idea of finding hope and reconciliation during the holiday season. Furthermore, Die Hard incorporates several traditional Christmas elements throughout the film, from the iconic Ho Ho Ho, Now I Have a Machine Gun line, to the festive references in the dialogue. It's Christmas, Theo. It's the time of miracles, so be of good cheer. The movie cleverly intertwines Christmas into its action-packed plot. On the other hand, those who argue against Die Hard being a Christmas movie claim that its action-packed nature overshadows any holiday themes. They argue that the film's violence and intense action sequences detract from the warm and joyful atmosphere, typically associated with Christmas movies. Die Hard's focus on explosions, gunfights, and high-stakes situations may not align with the traditional expectations of a Christmas film. This isn't Elf. My own personal opinion is that Die Hard works as a great film no matter what time of the year you watch it. It just so happens to work just as well at Christmas as it does at any time of the year. It all depends on your preference, of course, but given the choice between watching Die Hard or Love Actually on Christmas Eve, I'd go with Die Hard. Die Hard was a huge success on release, grossing over $140 million on a $30 million budget. It made Bruce Willis a megastar, and not only led to four sequels, but changed the course of action cinema for decades to come. For many years afterwards, there were seemingly endless amount of movies that came out directly inspired by the film that were basically Die Hard on a Boat, Die Hard on a Plane, Die Hard on a Bus, Die Hard on a Train, and so on. Even Star Trek The Next Generation got in on the act during the season 6 episode Starship Mine, which was, you guessed it, Die Hard on the Enterprise, where it was Captain Picard going all John McClane and a team of terrorists who'd taken over his ship. Overall, Die Hard is a timeless action film that continues to captivate audiences with its thrilling story, memorable performances, and expert direction. Bruce Willis' portrayal of John McClane and Alan Rickman's performance as Hans Gruber are iconic, while John McTiernan's direction and the film's technical aspects elevate it to a level of excellence. Whether you watch it at Christmas or not, it remains one of the best, if not the best, action movie ever made. Just ask Jay Peralta. Die Hard is the best cop movie of all time. One cop heroically saving the day while everyone else stands around and watches. It's the story of my life. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Share it with your friends. Click the bell for notifications. And let me know in the comments, do you think Die Hard is a Christmas movie? Most importantly, I hope you all look after yourselves, and I'll see you all in my next video. Happy holidays!